Now, there are a few things more heartbreaking to a gamer than when a hyped game is cancelled. However, the dissolution of a gaming project can actually be a blessing in disguise. Considering how badly Duke Nukem Forever and Alien Colonial Marines turned out, well, the developers should have trusted their gut when things started to go south. However, there are just as many great titles that nearly got canned. Classics like Super Smash Bros., Harvest Moon, and the original Donkey Kong, well, they just narrowly avoided ending up on the chopping block and many other well-known titles also came close to being axed for, well, let's just say very silly reasons indeed. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 of the dumbest reasons video games almost got cancelled. Number 10. A Flood, No Man's Sky no Man's Sky chaotic launch is very well documented. After being touted as the be-all and end-all of gaming, fans were dismayed to learn that Hello Games' project was tedious, boring, and above all else, not the greatest thing since sliced bread. But after the developers whipped up dozens of updates, No Man's Sky in this day and age is utterly brilliant, and with future updates planned, the formerly vilified title seems destined to only get better across the board. But in hindsight, it's a miracle that No Man's Sky made such a miraculous recovery, and it's not just because of its abysmal debut. The fact that this survival title exists in the first place is actually astounding, since Hello Games' office in Guildford was completely flooded. According to managing director Sean Murray, we lost all our PCs, laptops, equipment, furniture, dev kits, work in the blink of an eye. And when the insurance refused to cover the damage, the developers were stuck between a rock and a very wet place. Rather than quitting though, Murray and his team made a makeshift workstation and plowed ahead. Despite facing trials and tribulations on a biblical scale, No Man's Sky eventually saw the light of day. Number 9. It's too similar to Diablo. Fallout. Now, Fallout didn't start out as the post-apocalyptic roleplayer that we're all familiar with today. Initially, it was a game engine based on the tabletop playing system GURPS. While head producer Tim Kaine worked on the project, he hit some major snags. After Interplay attained the licensing rights for two Dungeons & Dragons franchises, it looked like GURPS was actually finished. Because D&D is the pinnacle of tabletop games, it was more sensible for the company to focus all of their energy on that rather than the lesser-known IP. However, Kane had faith in GURPS and so refused to back down. But the problems didn't stop there. Around this time, Blizzard released Diablo, cornering the RPG market on PC almost overnight. Interplay immediately terminated the licensing for GURPS, believing the inferior role player had no chance of competing. But rather than going quietly into the night, Kane reworked his entire game into what became known as Fallout. In order to do this, he and his co-designer Christopher Taylor had to redesign and recode everything in in just one week. Even though Fallout didn't sell as well as Diablo, it was recognized for its potential, allowing it to spawn many sequels and spin-offs. Number 8. Restructuring Bayonetta 2 Platinum Games did well straight off the bat, since their first two games, Mad World and Infinite Space, were met with praise. But their third title, Bayonetta, blew everything out of the water. Due to the sexy hack and slashes, innovative gameplay, mesmerizing cutscenes, and creative mechanics, we knew Platinum Games had forged their next big franchise. Selling over a million copies, it looked like there was 100% chance that Bayonetta 2 was on the cards. Sadly, all hope seemed lost after Bayonetta's publisher Sega uttered the dreaded word, restructuring. Due to financial issues, company executives decided to axe several potential titles, including the Bayonetta sequel. According to Bayonetta co-writer Hideki Kamiya, his company scrambled for funding from other publishers, but were repeatedly turned down. With nowhere else to turn to, Bayonetta seemed like it was done for. But suddenly, Platinum Games' saviour came from the strangest of sources, Nintendo. Despite being a family-friendly company, the Japanese titan was eager to turn the hyper-violent sequel into a Wii U exclusive. Bayonetta 2 became one of the highest-rated Wii U games, to the point where gamers purchased the console just to play it. Nearly a decade later, the series is still going strong, with the recently released Bayonetta 3 and Bayonetta Origins, all thanks to Nintendo's intervention. Number 7. Nintendo assumed the franchise was dead, every Fire Emblem after Awakening. For a time, Turok, F-Zero, and Time Splitters were massively popular, but when the money and interest started to dry up, each of these series faded away. And because gaming is a mercurial industry, it's hard to tell when a franchise has actually reached its climax, meaning that studios kind of just have to guess when the best time is to call it quits. But sometimes, the gaming giants get things wrong. During the millennium, for example, the Fire Emblem series finally broke into the West, giving Intelligent Systems' beloved RPG a wider audience than ever. Just before the release of 
2012's Fire Emblem Awakenings, Nintendo suddenly came to the conclusion that fans had had their fill of the tactics-based title. As a result, they were ready to abandon the franchise entirely if this entry didn't reach its sales quota. But not only was Awakenings a major success, it was the highest ever rated Fire Emblem entry. Receiving a resurgence in popularity, Intelligent Systems churned out numerous Fire Emblem sequels, spin-offs, and crossovers. They also released a mobile title, Fire Emblem Heroes, which became Nintendo's highest-grossing mobile game ever. I mean, it even outsold Mario Kart Tour. With the latest entry Engage doing well critically and financially, Fire Emblem is stronger than ever. Although Nintendo were certain that Fire Emblem was on the way out, it's made over a billion dollars since. So yeah, I bet they're glad they didn't cancel it. Number 6. Nobody could agree on the gameplay – Grand Theft Auto Even though the original Grand Theft Auto seemed pretty straightforward, the nightmarish behind-the-scenes antics tell a very different story. Now, In a nutshell, none of the creators could agree on, well, anything. Some developers wanted GTA to be a 2D-styled racer, while others pushed for a top-down perspective. Although a lot of the team wanted the player to take control of a police car, just as many people wanted to play as the criminal being chased. Since the coders, scriptwriters, and programmers refused to get on the same page, they threw tons of conflicting ideas at one project. Worse still, the beta didn't actually work. DMA Design's creative director Gary Penn said, even if you get something in the game, you couldn't really test it. The designers couldn't test stuff out or try things, it just kept crashing as simple as that. After four grueling years with little to show for it, DMA were desperate to can everything. In Penn's own words, every week they wanted to kill this game, since the team just couldn't figure out how GTA would look or play. Despite the fact that everyone was expecting an unplayable mess, the finished product was anything but. The creators may have winged it from start to finish, but they managed to kickstart one of the most celebrated and influential game franchises in history. Number 5. It took focus away from the N64 – Star Fox 2 Star Fox's polygonal models caused a major shakeup within the industry, especially since gaming companies at the time were about to transition to 3D-focused consoles. After the Thunderbirds-inspired rail shooter sold over 4 million units, Nintendo got cracking on Star Fox 2. With new ships to pilot, new characters to play as, and more variety in gameplay, fans were excited to revisit the Lilat system. As the developers were putting the final touches on this hyped sequel, Nintendo's priorities began to change. After the release of the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation, 3D graphics were no longer a novelty, they were becoming the norm. Believing their 16-bit Snayers title would look inferior compared to next-gen games, Nintendo halted all production on their Star Fox follow-up. Although you can understand the company's line of thinking, it still seemed a little unfair, since Star Fox 2 was 99% finished. It was so close to completion that fans completed the prototype themselves, turning this unreleased Star Fox entry into one of the hottest emulated games of the 90s. Fortunately, there is a happy ending. After a 22-year delay, Star Fox 2 officially debuted Super Nea's Classic Edition, allowing gamers to play the almost cancelled title for the first time. Well, at least legally, that is. Number 4. EA thought that World War 1 was boring – Battlefield 1 Although Battlefield started out in World War II, the sequels focused more and more on modern warfare, and with other shooters implementing more sci-fi elements, it appeared that DICE's franchise would follow suit. But creative director Lars Gustafsson decided to go in a different direction, having the 2016 installment Battlefield 1 take place during the First World War. Because few war titles centered around this period, Lars thought that his project would stand out, and game designer Daniel Berlin was on board with this pitch, since the weapons and gadgets gave players more varied playstyles. Unfortunately, EA executive Patrick Soderlund rejected the idea immediately, believing that trench warfare it can't be fun to play. Even though the team was told to give the next Battlefield installment a futuristic slant, well, they went ahead and created a Battlefield 1 demo for Soderlund. With the World War 1 angle intact, EA were deeply impressed, allowing the team to maintain their vision. Thankfully, Battlefield 1 received universal acclaim and sold a staggering 15 million units. Meanwhile, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, which launched at the same time, was ridiculed relentlessly for embracing the futuristic setting. If Lars didn't stick to his original plan, Battlefield 1 would have probably received a similar reaction. Number 3. Phil Fisher's Ego – Fez 
When game development becomes chaotic, it's only a matter of time before staff members are at each other's throats. However, butting heads is usually a side effect from developmental problems and not the cause of it. But things were very different with the creation of Fez, since head designer Phil Fish was at the forefront of every disaster. Despite Fish's unquestionable talent, his flippant behavior and childish antics nearly caused the indie project to self-destruct. Fish removed his founding partner Sean McGrath early on due to creative differences. And stranger still, Fish sought a replacement on Deviant Art, accepting the first programmer to reply, Renault Bedard. Although the demo was promising, Fish quickly ran out of money. Due to working exhausting hours, the protracted development cycle started to take a toll on Fish's mind and his health overall. During an interview with Game Developer, he admitted that he was seriously considering just giving up. Actually, it became like this weird suicide fantasy that I was going to cancel Fez out of spite, like you're never going to get it. At first, you might assume that this proclamation was mere hyperbole, but that is exactly what Fish did with the sequel. Despite the fact that Fez was a huge hit, the eccentric designer spontaneously canned the follow-up with little rhyme or reason. Considering how impromptu he was at terminating a guaranteed success, it's a marvel the first installment was actually ever released. Number 2. Various Reasons – Metroid Prime it's hard to think of a beloved gaming franchise that's endured more development problems than Metroid. Metroid Dread was delayed for 12 years, and we still have no idea when Metroid Prime 4 is actually coming out. And when you look at the issues the original Prime experienced, it's hard to know where to begin. Things were off to a rocky start when Shigeru Miyamoto tossed the project to Retro Studios after four of their IPs were abruptly cancelled. Miyamoto regularly demanded last-minute changes, which took an eternity to implement. Although the team worked up to 100 hours per week, it it took half a year just to complete the first section. By this point, you'd expect that the crew would have some extra help, right? Well, instead, 75% of their staff was let go, leaving nine people to complete the project. Just when you thought that things couldn't get any worse, Retro Studios founder Jeffrey Spangenberg thought that this was the ideal time to use the company's money to register a website depicting him with topless women. Yes, seriously. After he was fired, communication in Retro Studios was in disarray. On top of that, the gaming community wasn't particularly hyped for Prime since many didn't like how the game was turning into a first-person shooter. Because the fans weren't invested, nobody would have been surprised if the higher-ups pulled the plug. Although Metroid Prime should have been an unmitigated disaster, it became one of the most celebrated gaming titles ever. And number one, Nintendo hated it. GoldenEye 007 GoldenEye 007 turned out so well that it's hard to believe that the majority of its creators at Rare never worked on a video game before this. However, this was a major problem during the first-person shooter's development. Due to their inexperience, the team hit many roadblocks, which caused massive delays. Nintendo's lead designer Shigeru Miyamoto was mortified by the game due to its violence, and he was so unhappy by what he saw, he urged Rare to have the ending include a scene where 007 visits a hospital ward and shakes hands with all of the enemy soldiers that he shot, stabbed, or blew up, and yeah, we're not kidding here, this is true. But that's not all. After seeing that the game was riddled with bugs, Nintendo stopped funding the project for three months. Fortunately, Rare stepped in, giving the team all the money and resources they needed to see the James Bond adaptation through to the end. Although few had any faith in the movie tie-in, GoldenEye 007 became the most successful N64 game not to be developed by Nintendo. Despite the fact that this iconic shooter continued to have problems being released and ported even after 25 years later, there's no question that GoldenEye 007 is amongst the most influential games ever made. And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 dumbest reasons that video games almost got cancelled. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, so you can go follow me over on Instagram and Twitter, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all the best things in life. And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise. You are a massive ledge, and you deserve the bloody best. Now go out there and smash it today, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.